so you want to pay your favorite actors on Pornhub, but you don't hold any verge. Well, now you can still pay with cryptocurrencies. Pornhub has recently added Tron and Zencash as payment options, oh, yeah. making even more to choose from, from your favorite adult entertainment site. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Molly Jane Zuckerman from Cointelegraph, and this is your weekly HODLers Digest. Bitcoin is big in Japan. Some would even say that it's huge and could make the country great again. During the 1980s, Japan was number two in the world in terms of GDP. However, what followed was known as the lost decade. But all that could change, thanks to crypto and blockchain. Many now believe blockchain could usher in a tech boom, including Yoshitaka Kitao of SBI Holdings, who predicts blockchain will revitalize the Japanese economy. Japan is positioned to lead such a boom with the Internet of Things, AI, and the much anticipated 5G tech. SBI are putting their money where their mouth is with a $460 million AI and blockchain fund. We want to take blockchain beyond financial. SBI also announced the launch of a crypto exchange and has invested in a renewable energy wind farm to begin mining Bitcoin cash, which may disappoint the Bitcoin maximalists, but will please environmentalists. All that stands in the way of Japan becoming a genuine cryptopia, sorry Brock, is suffocating regulation. Earlier this year, the government clamped down on crypto exchanges after some major hacks. Before this, Japan had a relatively crypto-friendly approach, licensing 16 exchanges in 2017. This year, it penalized six and told others to revise their management structure. As long as Japan doesn't take a knee-jerk approach to crypto regulation, it could become one of the world leaders in making cryptocurrencies more mainstream. Zuckerberg drops the blanket. No, 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 not a literal blanket. Facebook has just ended its blanket ban on cryptocurrency ads. However, Facebook does maintain its ban on ICO ads. Crypto advertisers must now submit an application to Facebook with acceptance for the ads pending on their eligibility. Not everyone who wants to advertise will be able to do so. No specifics on the details, but safe to say, if your ad is fronted by this guy, you might want to rethink your campaign. Could this suggest that perhaps Zuckerberg and Facebook are thinking about releasing their own tokens? <clears throat> Cambridge Analytica certainly were. <clears throat> Zuckerberg toured states across America last year, leading some to speculate that he was gearing up for a 2020 presidential run. If that's the case, he would be joining the likes of Oprah, rapper Akon, rapper Kanye West, and cryptocurrency enthusiast and fugitive from the law, John McAfee. 2020 new president, new currency, new world order. And now to the US, where Congress held a cryptocurrency hearing this week. Protecting our elections, examining shell companies and virtual currencies as avenues for foreign interference, led by Senator Lindsey Graham. Exchangers can hop from jurisdiction to jurisdiction in pursuit of favorable regulatory regimes, and the anonymity that they afford users could be attractive to foreign adversaries seeking to thwart campaign finance laws. At the hearing, concerns were raised over Russia's potential use of virtual currencies to affect the U.S. political system, noting the country's interest in releasing its own cryptocurrency. The Trump campaign was alleged to have ties with Russia, and last week, Steve Bannon, who was a major part of the campaign, came out as a big Bitcoin believer. Which politician would you give your cryptocurrency to? Fundmeister economists like Kenneth Rogoff think that Bitcoin will eventually hit $100 and will only be used by rogue states in the next 10 years. Not Robert Schiller, Yale economics professor and Nobel Prize winner. Schiller literally shills for Bitcoin, taking a much more pragmatic approach. Schiller thinks Bitcoin is a social movement that runs along generational and geographic lines. It's an epidemic of enthusiasm, a speculative bubble. That doesn't mean it will go to zero. Referring to crypto as a bubble, Schiller believes crypto can recover even after the eventual burst. Tulips are still valued. There are some expensive tulips. He believes crypto's image as a remarkable social phenomenon means it will be resilient in the future, despite thinly veiled FUD presented as economic history lessons. Ponzi schemes, dot-com bubble, tulips, blah, blah, blah. 99 Bitcoins recently announced Bitcoin's 300th death. However, the cryptocurrency seems to be living a pretty active afterlife. Our favorite hype man is back. 
Some know him as Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. If you're more familiar with him, you can call him simply Woz. He reiterated this week his thought that blockchain is a bubble similar to that of the dot-com era, but one that could mature in the future. In Woz's opinion, it will take time for the hype around blockchain to die down, leaving only the companies with the good ideas left standing. However, Bitcoin is still just amazing, in Wozniak's words. The hype around blockchain may eventually die down, but one thing is for sure. The hype around the Woz never will, and neither will our love for him. Like for a free trip to Japan. Like, subscribe, and hodl for an all-inclusive spa weekend in Cryptopia. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.